Sylvain Charlebois joins me now, Senior Director, Agri-Food Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University. Sylvain, good to see you this morning. And I know you've been keeping a very close eye on those inflation numbers, sort of giving us your analysis, your sense here. When those numbers get released this yeah, so, week in June, your thoughts? Yeah, so oh, it was in May, the food inflation rate in Canada was at 9.7%. And last week, we learned in the U.S., that the uh, inflation rate at the grocery store was 12.4%. So uh, there's, there's clearly there's, there's some pressure on food systems right now across across the globe, uh, including North America and Canada. So we are expecting a scary number next mm -hmm. week, probably north of 10% for food inflation. But uh, things are calming down, Angie, mm. uh, to be honest. Uh, across the grocery store, you can see that prices are still rising, but not as quickly as they were a few months ago. So things are slowly coming down. The only exception that we're expecting uh, in Q3 and also in Q4, so fall and, and early winter, is dairy because dairy, uh, we know that the Cane Dairy Commission has accepted an increase, a second increase this year, 2.5%. So we are expecting a bump again in the fall as kids go back to school. Mm -hmm. So having said that now, because I mean, at least it's giving a little bit of comfort to say, although those numbers are looking very high, uh, what we're seeing in the grocery stores isn't necessarily directly reflective of that. Those prices are, are, are petering a little bit. But looking yeah. at sort of the long term, Sylvain, what is the impact going to be when we talk about those numbers and we're not really seeing relief until 2024? So that's a long it? haul. Yeah, so this is the general inflation rate that we're seeing in terms of forecasting. Uh, in our view, so we only look at food, and, and food has been quite volatile over the last 12 months. I think everyone knows that. Yeah. But like I said, Angie, I, I think things are calming down. In December last year with Canada's food price report, our 12th edition, we were predicting a food inflation rate of 7% for 2022. Now, we're at 9.7. We're likely going to reach 10%. But... But the food inflation rate, we're expecting it to drop slowly as we end the year. So there is light at the end of the food inflation tunnel right mm -hmm. now. How about supply? How about ensuring that the supply is there so that, you know, in some cases you aren't seeing those prices bump up because it's not meeting the demand? The, the supply supplies are there. Yeah. Uh, and if you talk to any food companies, the biggest challenge is to get enough people to move products around. And mm. if you don't have enough people you waste more, which ends up costing more. That's really the real challenge right now across the board from farm gate to store. So are you seeing now or efforts that need to be put in place to say, how do we get more people into the stores or into those, into those supply chain areas to get things moving? Well, I think we're seeing uh, a solution emerge already. Mm -hmm. uh, people are seeing more self-checkouts. Uh, so automation and robotics are going to be part of our own reality as consumers. And companies are automating more and more, I'm afraid, because they know recruitment is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, and machines don't get sick. Uh, the virus really got companies to think differently about uh, about human capital, generally speaking. So this is what we're saying. There's more investment, mm -hmm. which is actually going to stabilize the entire food supply chain. So it's good news overall. The power of technology and innovation. We will certainly take it if it means better prices at the uh, at the grocery store. <laughs> Indeed. Stable prices. Absolutely. absolutely. Sylvain Charlebois, great to have you, Senior Director, Agri-Food Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University. Thank you for this.